So here's another question about pica and producing gametes. So it says in pica there are four unlinked genes. So now we are looking at four separate sets of chromosomes that carry um, these alleles or these gametes. And so it says they are heterozygous for each of these. And uh, what is the likelihood that her gamete will produce um, this combination of alleles? So basically, we're trying to see um, all the different possibilities that could happen due to independent assortment when these chromosomes move to the middle of the cell and then they separate. So if we break it down um, one trait at a time and we look at just these A alleles, we can see that 50% of the gametes will have a dominant um, allele and 50% of the gametes will have a recessive allele. So if we look at Mendel's law of segregation for the A um, thing, she says she is high, uh, A gene, she is heterozygous. So you have a one half chance that the gamete will inherit a dominant allele. Now she is also heterozygous for the B trait and there's a one half chance that the gamete will inherit this recessive allele for B. She's also heterozygous for the C trait, and there's a one-half chance it'll inherit the recessive allele for C. And for D, um, again, one-half chance that it will inherit the recessive allele for that. Now, if you're thinking, why is there one-half chance? I'm not really sure why, why the, you know, she's saying this. Well, let's look at just the A allele. Um, when we look at the A allele and we model meiosis for this, you can see here is a diploid individual. Oh my gosh, an A, not a B. Sorry, an A. And then during S phase, the um, chromosomes duplicate. And then during meiosis, the homologous pairs are going to separate. So you'd have this happen. And so here would be cytokinesis after the end of meiosis one. Then in meiosis two, these sister chromatids would separate. So you can see that half the gametes inherit the sister chromatid, that's now a daughter chromosome, with the recessive allele, and half of them inherit the dominant allele. So up here, when I'm saying there's a one-half chance of inheriting the dominant allele, this is what I'm talking about. Now, why we don't do this or draw it out for all four is because um, during meiosis, when you have these duplicated chromosomes and they move to the middle of the cell, there's quite a few different possibilities, especially if these are unlinked traits of how they could move to the middle of the cell. Here, I have all of the dominant alleles lined up on the left, but in reality, it'd be super just as likely that maybe this dominant allele is on this side. There's lots of different combinations or ways that these homologous pairs will assort towards the middle of the cell. Because the question says that they are unlinked genes, I know that they're on separate chromosomes. And therefore, we're wondering how many different possibilities are there? And what is the likelihood that when they line up along the middle, what is the likelihood that the dominant A, a recessive B, a recessive C and a dominant D will all end up on one side. And then, because when they divide again, like what's the likelihood that all of these will end up in one gamete? So now we're gonna m multiply these. So we do, there's a one half times one half times one half chance that all of these will end up in the same gamete together. So two times two is four, times two is eight, times two is 16. There's, um, so with, we're looking at just four different um, genes here. There are 16 different combinations possible of how they can assort to the middle of the cell. So we say that there's a one out of 16 chance that all four of these particular alleles will end up in the same gamete.